I wanted to look into ways with LT Spice simulations to add noise to a signal like a clean sine wave and end up combining the noise plus the signal so I could simulate noisy conditions. For example, here on an oscilloscope, if you have a clean sine wave, but you're picking up some sort of noise, whether from a noisy switching power supply or just noisy circuitry or cabling, you may want to be able to simulate something like this and test what happens in a circuit. And after researching some ways to add noise to a simulation, I didn't choose this method, but you can choose a piecewise linear voltage source where you can do things like have a spreadsheet sort of data file with samples even from an actual oscilloscope saved capture or just generated data points in some other way, even just random numbers, and you can generate some noise and then use this in a simulation to recreate that waveform and do something with it. And that's sort of like having an arbitrary waveform generator where you may have data tables being used to synthesize various waveforms. But the way I settled on is using arbitrary behavioral voltage sources. They have voltage and current. So without going into all of this, we would use the BV for behavioral voltage source out of LT Spice. And then we can use all kinds of functions and other math to guide the behavior of this voltage source, including white noise, which generates random numbers between plus and minus 0.5. And we have a parameter for the function x. So I think there's a lot of things not documented. So I'm trying to interpret how to use this as I'm learning. And it says you get these random numbers x steps per second. So the number x here controls how many random numbers you get within one second, more or less. So we'll look at that, but first let's just start a simulation with one of these voltage sources. Right here is the behavioral source. So if we were to add a component, we choose the BV component symbol, arbitrary behavioral voltage source, and place that. So when we place it, we can just right click on this voltage equation here and then OK it. If I get rid of this because I don't need it, I ended up with using this white random noise generator with this as the X parameter. So that's what I typed in here. So first thing is this time variable here is our simulation time. I'm not sure what units that is in, but regardless, if we take that out, now we just have a constant. If I simulate this, we just get a flat line, one number, minus 413 and a half millivolts range, because it's just a constant controlling our random number every time. So this is just one data point being repeated. That's why we put time in there, then I run it, and we get actual changing data over time. Aside from that, the number 10,000, let's go figure that out. So here it had said you get x steps per second. Then I found this forum post. Somebody is saying, why did somebody choose 10,000 times time? And using these random number generating functions, including, I guess, white noise, the value of the function changes. I assume this means every time you give it a different integer for x. So when I just had a constant integer of 10,000, I was getting a constant random number. It wasn't going to change. If you use the time variable, I guess this implies time is in seconds because then once per second, this will give you a different random number because more time has passed. So if you say time multiplied by 10,000, you should get 10,000 data points changing per second, or one every 100 microseconds, which is 0.1 milliseconds. So let's take this information back to the simulation. So with 10,000 multiplied by time as our x, we would expect a new data point every 100 microseconds. So that means we should get 10 data points for 1,000 microseconds, or one millisecond. So here, if we take this as our first data point over the one millisecond range, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 data points, and then it just starts over at the next one millisecond interval. So that lines up with that form thing. If we want even more data points of noise, we can add another digit and simulate. Now we got way more. So basically what this means is play around with these numbers to get the result we want. So if I go back to just 10,000 and I change my simulation time, let's get 25 milliseconds of simulation and run this. Now we have a bunch of reasonable looking noise between plus and minus 500 millivolts. So I've now put a sine wave signal in series with this noise to add the noise to the sine wave. And if we scope this, there's our original noise between plus and minus half a volt. And we have our five volt peak sine wave with this noise added on top of it. So now here's where we can play with these numbers. Let's say we only had a thousand multiplied by time samples. Now there's less noise and we barely have a distorted waveform due to the noise. If we do a hundred thousand, now it's extremely noisy and fuzzy. So if I wanted to make this noise stronger or even more attenuated, I can just change this function so I can multiply the whole thing by 0.2 and scale it down. Now we have a little noise going on our sine wave. So we can do things like that, or we can actually make a circuit and just use this noise as its own source, adding it to the circuitry. So here's our sine wave again, but we're using an op amp summing circuit and combining noise with the sine wave this way. So I'm using a plus and minus nine volt supply on an op amp and it's being generated by two DC sources here in the virtual ground. It's a non-inverting amplifier just so that our original sine wave is going to have the same polarity as the final signal instead of inverted and it's harder to see what we're doing. And now we can control the gain on this if we want. We can still use math here in the function to change the noise amplitude itself. So it's just another way to go about it, depending what we need to do with this noise. I will add a lot more noise and increase its amplitude. It takes longer to simulate that much data. It's <laughs> drawing out the sine wave, but we can see what's happening if we don't want to wait this long. There's the noise with a lot of noise. And it's kind of looking like an oscilloscope with all of that noise fuzzy waveform result. Like this scope trace here, if we somehow wanted to reproduce that from a clean sine wave, picking up noise. And finally, there's our 25 milliseconds of simulated noise. I will put these spice files on GitHub and leave a link to that. And this can be a starting point to generating all kinds of arbitrary waveforms, not just noise.